everybody, it's Uncle Mars with uh, Leet Wine TV today. So, uh, do a little switcheroo. We're going to do a little white wine action. Um, today's white wine is the Gaetano Dacchino. No, da, uh, man, I've already messed it up. No editing. Gaetano Dacquino Pinot Grigio. Now, the cool thing about this wine, it's a 2007. That's not what's the cool part. But uh, it's 2007. Um, this wine is from the uh, Veneto region, Venice region. And uh, the funny part when I was looking up this wine is, um, being that we are Elite Wine TV, uh, this is the Elite bottle. This is the, the, you know, the pricey bottle compared to the other one. So I did a little research on this and, and uh, you know, why write down when you can t type stuff in. Um, not this particular bottle because it's the other one, uh, but it's called the Two Buck Chuck of Italian Wine. Now this one we paid, uh, a world market paid $6.99 for it. Um, it's Pinot Grigio, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll check it out here. Alright, swirl around so we can get a little bouquet. Uh, today, opened the wines up a little bit earlier, so been open for about, let's see, 45 minutes, so hopefully they had a little time to breathe. Well, let's see here. And I'm getting something that's really just kind of unusual to me. Um, not a pleasant smell, let's put it that way. I'm going to say kind of stinky. I can't give you anything specific, but kind of stinky. Um, so I don't have an alcohol smell. It's 12% alcohol, by the way. Though, uh, when you go to the website, they say they're 11.5, which is kind of funny. The website has a different alcohol amount. I don't know, moldy maybe. Moldy like cheese. Not bad mold, but moldy like cheese, I guess. That's what I'm getting out of it. Of course, it could be the fact that I did eat a little bit of cheese about 30 minutes ago, so I might be getting that still. Let's go ahead and check it out. It's light. Uh, it's pretty refreshing. Um, don't get a lot of acid on it. With white wines, you, you're looking more for the acid rather than red wines. You're looking for the tannins. Hmm. It still could be that I had some cheese earlier, so that might be why I'm getting a little bit of cheese play. But you know, I'm getting something like that. Yeah, it's, um, I get a little bit of fruit. The acid's starting to come a little bit more. I'm getting a little more of that. Um, and maybe kind of like a, a bready taste to it, which you wouldn't expect from a still wine. Usually you get like that bakery bread uh, taste from, you know, sparkling wines. Uh, that's what you're supposed to get. But um, I'd say it's a pleasant wine. You know, it's it's kind of summery. Um, it's easy to drink. Uh I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say it was the best Pinot Grigio I've ever had. But at the same time, it, it's, it's really light and easy to drink. Um, if I was going to score it, I'd probably score it in the mid-80s, mid to high 80s. I'm not a, not a specific score. Uh, I would buy it again. And, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty good. I kind of like it. Let's see what they say on the back label. Uh, there's a, a full dry flavor and a, pleasantly, ple a pleasingly bitter aftertaste didn't know a bitter aftertaste could be pleasing. And then, of course, they're saying that, you know, you should be uh, compliments of hors d'oeuvres and fish dishes. 
and forms an excellent accompaniment for soup and white meat. Now, um, one thing that, that uh, I've, I've picked up on in, in my wine drinking is, especially if you're going to evaluate wine, is drinking whites, or all, all wines at room temperature. If I was drinking this a little chilled, um, it probably, it might be a little bit tastier, a little more refreshing. Um, I tend to go ahead and just drink the white wines at room temperature, but you know, sometimes I'll put them in the refrigerator for like 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. You don't need them ice cold, and that's one thing that restaurants really are, uh, have a hard time, I have a hard time with restaurants is that they stick these these wine bottles in their beer coolers, okay, and then keep your beer coolers at 40 degrees or lower, sometimes as low as 35 degrees. So when you get these wines and they're at 35, 40 degrees, it, you're not tasting anything. You got to let these things warm up. So unfortunately, most restaurants, especially when they're just serving just whatever kind of wine, uh, they don't, they can't afford to have these uh, coolers that are maybe set at like a 65 or a 50 degree temperature for storage, um, they, keep them, they keep these wines very, very cold. So a little tip, so that if you go to a restaurant, if you, if you know ahead of time, say a nicer restaurant maybe that but serves your wine too cold, you can always try to see if they can take the wine out a little bit early. Or as soon as you walk in the door, if you know you're gonna order some wine, a white wine, you can ask them to go ahead and, and go ahead and pull it out and then get the wine a little bit later. Um, also, as soon as you get in your glass, you can kind of warm it up, and that's what I usually do. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Um, you guys, I'm getting some great comments and suggestions. Um, so go ahead and right below, there's uh, things as comments. Sometimes it doesn't update how many comments there are very well. A lot of times it says zero comments when there really are comments. So go and click the link, uh, add your comments, and get some great suggestions. Uh, also, uh, my personal email or the email for, for here. Um, getting some great suggestions about future episodes. Uh, someone mentioned about maybe I should drink the wines or taste the wines, some kind of tasting prior to recording so that maybe I have a little more time to kind of think about the wines. And that's a great suggestion. Uh, Glenn, thank you very much for that. Um, that might be something I might do. Uh, something I also will do is the reason doing the white wines, we've got this wine, and then the next episode we've got another one, is tonight's dinner is a turkey roast. So. Hopefully this will go well with it. If not, the other one I'm kind of excited to have. Uh, that will be the next episode. Uh, it's a varietal I've never had before, and that's what I always love to do, stuff I've never had. So um, so I might come back and uh, talk about the wines after the fact, after dinner, uh, maybe just how, how it paired with the, with the food. So we'll, we'll see how that works out, kind of like how the wine went with the food, and then we'll do that. Um, again, as always, you got the links over here to the right. Uh, for donations and if you want to do a, a monthly donation but don't want to have to remember to donate all the time a two dollar subscription fee uh, eventually we'll have some real ads so you just click on the ads maybe buy some wine from some other place so I'm not like begging you for money <laughs> or at least overtly doing that um, I'll have some links concerning uh, how to buy some books through Amazon the books that I've been reading or I have read in the past the study for sommelier uh, certified for the introductory to sommelier exam um, so we got some more content coming. The website's still brand new. I'm getting a lot of followers on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, friend me up. It's 1337wine, just like the website. Uh, I'll have links to that for Twitter, Facebook. Uh, probably won't have a MySpace page, but you know, I'm starting to get a lot of things going on. Obviously, you can see this is a, the players on Vidler, so this is where all the, uh, the high-quality videos are hosted is on Vidler. Those guys, Colin and, and Rob, are great over there. So I highly suggest, as far as a video site, if you want to go there. Uh, see so who else can I plug? <laughs> Um, and that's really just going to be it. We're going to go ahead and finish this up, and I will see all of you tomorrow with the next wine. Thanks a lot. Hey, kids, it's Uncle Mars with, uh, <laughs> it's not my me today. <laughs> Scratch that.